You take a little time away and like you forget how to speak. It's incredible. This is like take 50. Anyway, hi. For the last couple of days, I've been working on this little prototype that's basically been an excuse to learn shaders. There's this guy in the Bacon and Games Discord, and he's been sharing all these really cool planet shaders that he's been making. What's up, Fritzy? And it got me thinking, I've never really messed with shaders, I think because they intimidate me. So I came up with this little project, and in the process, I learned that shaders are, no, nope, actually they're quite intimidating still. But more importantly, which is the subject of this video, you can do an awful lot with very little. So like any good game developer, I was working on this game. It's a little puzzle game that shows you a couple of lines at a time of an image, and you have to guess what it is. Which, by the way, it's based on an old Flash game that for the life of me, I cannot find. So if anybody knows where I can find this game, please put it down below. But like I said, like any good game developer, I was working on this and got distracted by something else shiny. Or conversely, something that is the least shiny thing possible, which is my start screen. Because it comes from my game template, which this is built on. I will link that below. And I thought using the very little bit that I now understand about shaders, I could make a pretty nice background with an image and some colors that you could ship with, or at the very least would make your game jam game look very passable in just a matter of minutes. So let's take a look. First, of course, we need a title. Next, uh, we've got this texture rec that scrolls a tileable image, and you can change some settings, which we'll look at in a second, and a color rec. You can mix those together and very quickly get a cool... I, I see games ship with backgrounds less interesting than this, which is not a dig. Um, it's just a reality. So anyway, let's take a look. Uh, obviously, we've got our texture here um, that is scrolling. And we're using Keep Aspect Covered because it's going to maintain the aspect ratio of our tiled image, even if it doesn't tile evenly. So let's scroll down to the shader and see what we can actually do with it. Got a scroll speed, right? Which controls how quickly it scrolls. What a surprise. I like it a little slower, but you do you. We've got the angle of the scroll. So if I wanted it to go straight down, I could set it to 90. If I wanted to go something like up and to the right, I can set it to, you know, 300-ish. Um, this repeat X and Y is where we get our tile resolution. So the more of these I do, the smaller they're gonna get. And then we've got this tinting feature. So this image is where you see this these whitish squiggles is white and then everything else in that image is transparent. So if I pull this transparency all the way up, that's what the image looks like. It's a little harsh, um, but you see, I can, you know, I can set the color of this and the transparency, and then I can come over to the color rect and I can maybe take a slightly different hue. And, you know, we've got a, pretty passable title screen with like almost no effort. Um, it's super easy to swap stuff out. So let's say I was making some sort of Valentine's love themed game jam. I can swap in these hearts and you know, if I want them to look bigger, I can pull down the tiling and now I got these big hearts. I can make them more red, you know, maybe it's a like red on more of a white background. You know, that's a little little oppressive, but you know, you get the idea. Let me just put this back to something a little less hard to look at. Um, that's the basic idea. So I wanna, I'm gonna show you the shader. We're not gonna get super technical with this uh, one because I'm not sure how well I can explain it, but also not really the focus here. Um, couple of quick things. So my shader parameters are coming from these uniforms up top. You can think of them like export variables. That's what exposes them here. And, you know, the gist is we've got this fragment shader. Um, and I will link a couple of the resources I used to kind of Frankenstein this together. It was a couple of videos, a couple of things from godotshaders.com dot something. I'll link it down, down below. Um, we're taking our angle, converting it to radians, that we can break it down into vectors along the unit circle, basically. And this just saves us from having to input the X and Y direction separately. I think it's a lot easier to just pick an angle. So that's what these first two lines do. We're using this 
um, time variable, which just counts up forever once the engine starts to use it to multiply it by our speed and our direction to get this sort of scrolling pattern. And then down here, we're utilizing this repeat X and Y to manage the tiling. And we're stuffing that all back into this color variable. This writes the data back into the image on every iteration of this. That's how fragment shaders work. Again, I will link several resources that you can watch if you want to know the nitty gritty of a fragment shader. It's not the purpose of this video. Um, let's take a look at two more things. So one, if we come back over to our puzzle, which is also very bland, um, because we've saved this shader. Here, I'll actually walk you through that. So let's add a texture rect and put it at the bottom. If we come over here to the material, click new shader material. And this is a little bit unintuitive, I think. You get this sort of like empty shader. If you click on that, you'll get this default kind of empty shader. And then we can either select new shader, which is how I made the one you just saw. Um, and that'll dump you into the properties inspector that we saw. Uh, I'm gonna choose quick load because that's gonna bring up any shaders I have. Here's the one for the game and here's our background and click open. Now I can expand this and here are our parameters. Now, nothing's happening because we haven't done a couple of things. One, we need the texture rect to fill our view port. So we're gonna set it to full rect and then we need to give it an actual texture. So I've got a couple samples here. Let's pull this little squares one in. I like that a lot. Looks terrible, right? Well, one, we gotta reset our aspect ratio and you'll see we're getting one, this is one tile and then here's sort of that overflow that we talked about. But it's huge, it looks terrible. So we can increase the scaling to make it a little prettier. I'm gonna turn this down because I still think it's too fast. And then if I wanna sort of subtly tint it, I can hit it with these colors. And if I want it to be more subtle, I can pull the alpha way down. And now all of a sudden I've got this way more interesting gameplay screen, right? Um, this one in particular, you'll notice is a, if I reset this, it's a black and white image. And this is taken from Kenny's free pack of tileable, eh, yada, I'll put a link down below. Um, these are totally fine to use. You can use an image of any kind. I prefer to work with something that is uh, white with transparency. So like this one, for example. And that way you can edit the two colors separately. So let's add our color rect, reposition it to the top, make sure that it too is set to full rect. So let's make this a, uh, you know, a light shade of blue. And then we'll make our pattern like a slightly different blue. Maybe pull that down a little bit. Now we've got like a way more interesting screen in like five seconds. Um, so let's look at how easy it is to actually make your own tileable. If you've got a sprite, which I highly recommend you pick this up because it's super handy, super easy to make tileable images. You go to view, turn your tiled mode to both axes, and that's gonna give you a nine by nine version of your sprite. Um, I'm using 256 by 256. You can use any size image with this shader. Just be aware that the size of your initial tile is going to affect the resolution when you set the number of repeats. I like to start by drawing on one of these boundaries so I get an idea of where, the, where these things repeat. So I'm gonna start by drawing my diamond and I'm gonna finish it over here. And then sort of somewhere in the middle-ish, this is kind of where I want, let's say up here. Uh, and now I'm looking down at the bottom one. Let's draw the heart. So let's say, you know, we've got a heart. Uh, maybe kind of offset over here, we've got our clubs. And then like this gap is looking pretty empty. So we'll put our spade a little smaller right here. All right. And now I'm going to fill them in. 
And now I can go back to tiled mode, turn that off. There is my okay looking tile. Good enough for the example. Let's export this and we're gonna call it cards. I already have my directory set to where I want it. Now we can come back into Godot, find our new pattern and swap that out. And there we go. Now we've got a totally relevant, different looking background in a matter of seconds. The last thing I'm gonna show you, and I think some people are gonna laugh at me for this, but hey, it's Godot and nodes are kind of king here. Um, you can take this a step further, either with an animation player node. And if you wanna go the pure code route, you can also do this with tweens. Let's create a new animation. I don't know, I'll just call it a color change, right? And let's make it, I don't know, 10 seconds long. And with our animation player selected, well, actually with our texture rec selected, let's scroll down here. And in our animation editor, you see we get these keyframes. And I can click on our tint keyframe, create. And let's go to the end and create another one because we want this effect to loop. And now in the middle, let's make this that color, sure and hit the keyframe again, and set this to loop and play on start. And if I hit play, and now you'll see it's actually changing the color of the shader over time, just like you'd animate any other property. So I'm sure some people are gonna pick on me and say, hey, you could do this right in the shader, or there's a better way to do it. But again, you know, this is Godot, it's built around nodes. And if you wanna do this and it takes you 30 seconds to do it, I say go for it. So that is a very quick overview of a new feature that I'm gonna be bringing to the game template, uh, again, linked down below. Anyhow, that's gonna do it for me. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. We're getting awfully close to 5,000 and I would love to hit that with this video. Keep an eye out for this, along with some other updates to the game template, which are coming soon-ish in air quotes, and keep an eye out for this game. I am going to finish it and I will make it available for both playing and picking through the very terrible code that's probably going to be in there. As always, I really appreciate your spending your time with me. Please be kind to yourself, be kind to others. I will see you in the next video. And if you're looking for something else to watch, try and check out one of these. Have a good one.